Good afternoon to you. Mark Suttoth, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your off-season edition of the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion. Now for Monday, May 22nd, 2017. Let's take a look at what's happening with the Southern Oscillation Index, the good old SOI. Positive, again, for today at 2.47, and that has coupled with the fact that the last several days have all had positive readings, means that our 30 and 90 day values are coming up. In fact, the 90 day is negative 1.85 now. And as I've talked about, this is just digging a deeper hole for the potential for El Nino to develop. And it's about time that uh, we put this to bed and probably not even worry about an El Nino affecting the Atlantic hurricane season. And uh, so at some point I'll stop talking about it, or at least it'll be much more seldom. And we'll talk about it more for the winter, fall, and what it might mean for 2018, if it ever even manifests itself. Usually an El Nino, a warm event in the Pacific, peaks out in the winter months, December, January, something like that. And so we'll see. It's just it's not looking good if you're looking for an El Nino. And these values should continue to go up over the next few days. And then I'm seeing word out in the Twitter universe and elsewhere that uh, these values will start to go down again once we get to June. And uh, they may do so. Uh, you know, it's not uncommon for this to flip-flop. But all of these positive values, again, it's like a basketball team being down and the clock is running out. Uh, and in this case, it's not about winning the game. It's about whether or not there will be an El Nino, and I don't think it's going to happen at this point. And as we see with the anomaly chart for today, the extreme eastern Pacific here is a little bit warmer than it should be by about a degree Celsius. But this area is easily changed by local conditions, and this will flip-flop as well. The vast majority of the tropical Pacific out here is running pretty much right where it should be, slightly warmer than average. We call it, you know, basically a warm neutral signal. And then what's really fascinating and different to me, uh, look at all of this very cold anomaly showing up here, and eh, not so much this, but the rest of it, that's a big difference over the last few years, especially right here off the coast of Mexico. Uh, and, you know, you look at the difference and you try to compare this to where this would be in the Atlantic Basin, you know, this latitude would be, you know, out in here as an example. So, yeah, this water is quite a bit colder off the coast of Mexico, and so that should keep the hurricane activity there to a minimum uh, and, you know, mitigate it somewhat. And so that's maybe another factor that would affect what happens over here. Because if you're not creating upward motion over here, and generating cyclones, then you don't have sinking air coming down on this side. Uh, when you have upward motion or deep tropical convection, and that's what a hurricane is, that air subsides, what we call subsidence, and it sinks on the periphery somewhere else. And when they just come one after the other, like we have seen in recent years in the Pacific, that'll have detrimental impacts on Atlantic activity. And then speaking of the Atlantic, I just can't say enough about this. We pretty much have this horseshoe shape. Uh, I should have put the whole, you know, the entire Mercator map in here, the global map, to show you. It's not quite all the way up towards Greenland and Iceland, but you know, we're getting pretty close here to a pretty classic warm AMO look. Uh, certainly off the Iberian Peninsula, uh, you know, you have this crescent shape here, boomerang shape. And the very cold water in the subtropics, north of the warm water, focusing the energy where you would expect it to be. Uh, I just, I don't see how, well, hey, the Weather Channel has already, uh, and the weather company, you know, that the, they work with all the different meteorologists there. It's not just the Weather Channel, like, you know, one guy, okay? It's a, a bunch of people, and they talk about it, and, you know, they take uh, some effort into coming up with their numbers, and they've increased their numbers for the season ahead. And I expect that uh, Colorado State University will do the same. And on the 25th, just three days from now, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration will release their forecast for the season. And this has to be taken into account for sure, and especially the lack of ENSO warm event in the Pacific. So it's, it's coming. I think we're going to see a busy season. 
and this just pretty much seals the deal for me. Um, this warm pool in here is now shrinking. You notice in the western Pacific here, okay, there could be a westerly wind burst of substantial proportions where the pressure pattern changes, and instead of having the normal strong trades blowing from east to west here, remember this is the top of the ocean here. This is 450 meters down. This is the east side of the Pacific, the tropical Pacific. This is the west side. And normally your trade winds blow across, you know, nice and strong and keep everything mixed. Well, even if that reverses, we get a massive drop in the Southern Oscillation Index, meaning that the pressure pattern changes across the tropical Pacific, and we have strong westerly winds coming across. There's just not much warm water in the subsurface to kind of push along as well. You know, there would be some warming along the surface itself. But any relaxation of that westerly wind burst and a, re a resumption of the trades would quickly cool it back off. And when you see these big voids of heat content right here, and then another one growing in the West Pacific, um, it's just it's not happening. We're not going to have an El Nino event during the 2017 peak time of the hurricane season of August, September, October. Uh, I'm 90% confident. So. Uh, looking at actual sea surface temperatures, the Gulf pretty much ready to go. Your shelf waters are all now 26 Celsius or warmer. Check this out down in southwest Florida, the Keys, Florida Bay, all oh, that whole area. Uh, we're talking low 80s Fahrenheit, 26, 27, 28 degrees Celsius, 28C is 82 Fahrenheit. Uh, so the Gulf is primed and ready to go for the most part, only this sort of purplish whatever color through here and that'll fill in probably by this time next week in the Atlantic this is just I can't believe this I mean we go let's just look back at the anomalies real quick so right off the East Coast here uh, very positive anomalies you know in some cases maybe a degree or more Celsius above the long-term average and then if we go and look at the actual temperatures what does that translate into well, there's the 26 Celsius line, and that reaches all the way up to almost 37 north latitude. That's not a real big deal. It's just, to me, it's fascinating. So if you came off of Cape Cod in a boat and went down here just off of, you know, pretty good clip out from uh, Delaware and Maryland, but right there in the north wall of the Gulf Stream, the water temperature would be around 80 degrees. Whereas if you went into Wrightsville Beach, where I was yesterday with my kids, the water temperature is 75. <laughs> it's just like, wow. I mean, that's. I know it's no big deal, and hey, that's how the ocean works, Mark. But it's it's fascinating to me. That's just amazing. Uh, and then important for the hurricane season. I mean, look, there's 27 Celsius already working its way up in the Gulf Stream right down the middle. That's 81 degrees Fahrenheit just offshore of Cape Fear and Cape Lookout. Wow. So yeah, we're it's setting up. I'm, it, you know, doesn't mean something will definitely happen, right? It's it's I use sports analogies a lot. <sighs> I mean, you can have collapses where you just don't know what happened, like 2013. But boy, the signs are definitely there for a very busy season ahead. I just can't say enough about it. Um, busy right now? Well, no, the Eastern Pacific. This is the Southeast Pacific, Gulf of Tehuantepec here. You have El Salvador, and you have Guatemala, Honduras, Nicaragua, and off their coast on the Pacific side here, nada. Nothing going on, very limited convection overall, and in fact, a wider shot. Look at this. You can see, you know, this is where all that cold water is lurking out here, and you can see some of that evidenced by this low cloud cover. Very stable air mass when you see that kind of milky stratocumulus cover. Um, there's... No hurricanes are going to form under those conditions, that's for sure. And the intertropical convergence zone out here, pretty much flat, so headed to Hawaii. No worries whatsoever from anything in the deep tropics at all. In the Atlantic Basin, well, it's not hurricane season just yet, but I want to show you a couple of things here. Uh, on the visible satellite shot, you can kind of pick out how the winds are blowing, you know, clearly like this, if I had to make a guess, right? Uh, here's all your deep convection over the land as these storms continue to roll across North America. And uh, a lot of heavy rain coming up for parts of the south and southeast and Gulf Coast states, so please be aware of that. 
But why don't we have anything to worry about right now? Well, the upper level winds are just too strong. This is the uh, wind barb chart, and you can see pretty much everything is blowing from west to east in the tropics for now. And a better way to look at it is uh, uh, red is stop and green is go generally. And you see there's a lot of red, especially blasting through the deep tropics here. And that's why this time of year we don't really worry about it. Uh, development chances, you know, zero. Uh, once hurricane season starts, you know, pretty much this area will be where we watch. And off and on, the GFS in the long range kind of getting crazy with its convective feedback and tries to develop something in the lower resolution resolution time frame. And, uh, you know, that's going to pop up here and there. People will talk about it from time to time. But it's really, I'm trying to find my last graphic. There it is. It's really nothing, I don't see anything developing uh, between now and this day, day one. Good segue into that, right? June 1st. Um, but you will see from time to time on the GFS and maybe some of the other models. And people, you know, kind of criticize it. Oh, it's that stinking GFS. It's two weeks out or ten days out. I mean, if anybody is taking that seriously. But what it does show me is the GFS is sensing the change in the seasons. And it's moving more towards a warm core, convectively active process in its, uh, in its modeling, in its physics. And I'd say if it doesn't show something, eh, maybe it's a good thing if they got rid of that sort of issue. But again, it's 10 days to two weeks out. Who cares? Once it becomes a week or less and more models show it, then we can start looking. But I don't see anything right now that looks like it will develop anytime soon. So as we get closer here, we're, um, what is it, the 22nd? So we're, we're close, you know. Uh, Thursday, June 1st, just a week from this Thursday, Hurricane season begins, and I'll have a very special live broadcast. Uh, I will be able to produce this on YouTube. That's where it will originate. And then there will be a simulcast on Facebook Live. Tested this the other day when I was driving to a video shoot that I was doing, some freelance work, uh, and it worked great. Couldn't believe it. And that was mobile. Yeah, I was streaming from the truck. So this will be from the office with uh, good bandwidth and good lighting and uh, hopefully a really good presentation. So mark your calendars, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, a uh, very special live broadcast, day one of the hurricane season. Looking forward to talking to you about what to expect from the various forecasts, a look at our technology that we use to bring you exceptional landfall coverage when it happens, and some tips on how to be ready this season and not your usual stuff. I think people know the usual stuff. I want to give you my perspective on the things that I have seen in my 20-year career and being in over um, 25, 30 hurricanes, whatever it is. I think I've learned a thing or two, and I want to be able to share that with you. All right? So tune in for that, June 1st, 7 p.m. And if you miss it, can't be around for it, hey, I understand you can catch the archive as soon as it's done, and it's in the archive. Have a great rest of your Monday. As always, thanks for tuning in. It's great to have my voice all the way back, too. Yay, good for that. And um, I'll be back on Thursday. I'm going to do these twice a week now from here on out, unless I take a vacation at some point when there's a nice lull in the season. We'll talk about that later. Again, thanks for tuning in. I'm Mark Sedeth, HurricaneTrack.com. I'll talk to you again on Thursday.